Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Um, today, we're going to talk about vitamin B6. Before we get started, just do the usual. Thank you for joining us on Amazon Live, Facebook Live, and on YouTube at Clean Machine Online. Thanks in advance for any likes, uh, any uh, follows, and subscribes. Uh, this video is for informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And that is required by the FDA. So we follow the rules. But I love speaking about the research, especially when it clarifies things that maybe we assumed were one thing, but as the research paints can be something totally opposite. And that happens to be true with a lot of things that they assumed about a plant-based diet because a lot of the research was done on those consuming a standard American diet uh, or SAD. Well, it's a meat-centered diet, the omnivore diet. And so when you study people, you make assumptions about where they're at based on their diet. But you, what the research that was done on standard American people the vast majority of people who are eating the standard American diet, omnivore, mixed meat-centered diet, those people were having different results, different outcomes, but also different intakes of nutrients and different intakes of nutrients in different forms too as well. Now, there was an assumption that since meat-based diets were high rich in calories uh, and sustained people well, that um, they were better. <laughs> And we're finding out a lot of that is just simply not true. They were basing the information based on studies done on those uh, consuming a standard American diet, omnivore diet, meat, meat centered diet. Now, when we look at people who have been on a plant based diet for a while, things change. Well, when you eat a more plant based diet, you're consuming more fiber. Therefore, you're feeding and changing your microbiome, your microbiota, all the good bacteria, friendly gut flora that actually can change how those nutrients are absorbed, how those nutrients get converted, made bioavailable, change forms, uh, all the different polyphenols and fighting nutrients that are in plants. They also feed that gut microbiome. So there's a lot of changes that are going on physiologically when we change diet. And researchers really weren't accounting for that in early studies done based on that. They made assumptions that everybody's body works this way. Instead, what we're finding out is, no, that's the way the body is working while it's on an omnivore diet or a meat-centered diet. When you change to a plant-based diet, whole cascade of physiology changes can happen. And that's why we need to start looking at more studies, looking at both those on a meat-centered diet and a plant-based diet. Well, this study actually did just that. Because one of the questions were, you know, there's been assumptions that, oh, you know, if you're vegan, the first question you get is where do you get your protein, right? So they thought, you know, vegans were protein deficient. What we find out is just the opposite of true, is that actually meat center diets are too much protein and too much protein, even within that protein, there are too high levels of certain amino acids, essential amino acids. I used to say, oh, plants were incomplete because they didn't have the same essential amino acid profile as meat. Now we know just the opposite is true. <laughs> it's actually not that um, uh, plant-based amino acid profiles are too low. It's that <laughs> the amino acid profiles especially of uh, amino acids, sulfur amino acids like methionine and cysteine are actually too high in animal products and that we should actually be bringing those levels down to uh, help uh, uh, reduce the risk of cancer, heart attack, stroke, diabetes. Most of the common diseases uh, are caused by these fats uh, that are found in meat, saturated fats and, and um, uh, palmitic acid, uh, which is an interesting uh, receptor for uh, and cancer cells that they feed on. Methionine feeds cancer cells. These animal proteins are high in these things and lacking fiber, polyphenols, the things that actually protect the body in it. So it wasn't that 
we were uh, the plant-based diet is too low in essential amino acids or incomplete compared to the no it's actually better it's less harm to the overall body by consuming a plant-based protein well another one of the things that they said um they said you know uh, vi uh, vitamin k2 is insufficient because uh plant-based diet is mostly vitamin k1 but they didn't realize was that when you consume vitamin K1, it comes in usually dark greens, right? Green vegetables, which are rich in what? Fiber. Well, that fiber then feeds the bacteria, the very bacteria that actually consume the K1 and convert it into K2. Because there's such rich amounts of vitamin K1, almost all of it comes from, uh, from plants, um, so much source, like just a single scoop of clean green protein, uh, over a thousand percent of your <laughs> vitamin K1, but that vitamin K1 then needs to go in and be converted to vitamin K2. Well, they said, well, they looked in the studies for those consuming a uh, standard American diet, which was low fiber, right? Because they're not eating much plants. They weren't feeding the microbes that actually did the conversion of K1 to K2. So they made an assumption, scientists, medical fields made an assumption that, hey, everybody must be not able to convert K1 to K2 very well. No, that's not the truth. It's when you're not consuming enough fiber that feed the bacteria that actually do the conversion. What happens when you put more fiber in there? You're feeding that bacteria, they start to multiply just like any other species. When you feed them a good plant source and give them a good environment, they multiply. Well, if there's more of those bacteria, they can convert more of that vitamin K1 to K2. So it's interesting when they looked at this study for um, B6. Let me pull up the, the study. I'm going to put it up on the screen there for you. So what was interesting is vitamin B6, the assumptions that they made, once again, looking at those on a standard American diet. Let me take this down first while I talk and explain the study. So the study, and I'll put it up on the screen for those of you watching on Facebook Live, for those of you who are watching on Amazon Live, I'll always just describe the study to you because I can't get that done on Amazon Live, at least not yet. Hopefully they'll have increased functionality soon where we can put these uh, titles of studies and things like that up on the screen for you. But for those watching on uh, Facebook Live or watching later on YouTube, I'm gonna put that up on the screen for you. So there's the there's the title of the study and i'll read it out for those on amazon live vitamin b6 status among vegetarians findings from a population-based survey and what they found and i'll just jump to the title because the more interesting part is the substance inside but they found in our summaries our findings suggest that a vegetarian diet does not pose a risk for vitamin b6 deficiency so they found no evidence that there's vitamin B6 deficiency. So where did they get this assumption that those consuming a plant-based diet would have lower amounts? Well, it came from this. And I'm gonna... So in the previous studies, again, these were studies done on your standard American diet folks, right? Those on an omnivore diet. They found that uh, those consuming an omnivore diet actually had poor conversion and poor absorption and utilization of the B6 from plants. So they assumed, well, then the animal source must be a better source than the plant source. Well, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to pull up the, uh, uh, for those of you watching on Facebook Live, again, let's see, I'll pull it up here. Here is the study. Let me take down the actual comment. So, okay, so here is the study. All right, for those of you watching on Amazon Live, I'll describe it to you because you can't see the graph. Uh, but on one side of the graph, they looked at dietary intake. That's uh, the left-hand side or the right-hand side, depending on what it is. Look at the intake one. So the dietary vitamin B6 intake was higher in those eating a standard American diet or a meat-based diet. Meat eaters had higher intake of vitamin B6 overall. 
But this is where it gets interesting. So they measured the blood serum level and they found that vegetarians amongst meat eaters, flexitarians, pescatarians, those eating fish and vegetarians, vegetarians had the highest amount of B6, even though they showed lower B6 intake. So wait a minute, how's that possible? How can you have lower B6 intake and then have higher blood levels of B6? Well, there's a couple of possible explanations here, and I'm going to go through some of them, and it may be a combination of these two. Now, this is just guesswork here. We're looking at this study and trying to extrapolate what does this mean. Now, the good news is that that means vegetarians or those eating a plant-centered diet are consuming less, but they're still getting more in the bloodstream. And that's really important because then, one, there's no risk for us, uh, for those eating a, a good, healthy, whole food, plant-based diet for risk of not getting enough B6. But why would those levels be higher in the bloodstream, even though their intake, the intake was lower than those eating a meat-centered diet? And conversely, why is there a high intake in meat eaters, but then end up with a lower amount in the bloodstream? Well, here's some possible uh, uh, reasons for that. One, because when you put meat into the uh, digestive tract, it changes the microbiome. The reason it does that is because the body secretes bile. Bile is, uh, helps break down the meat because it's very difficult for our human bodies to break down meat. So our body has to secrete bile into the digestive tract. Well, when you secrete bile, you create a bile environment, fluid filled with bile in the digestive tract. And that's where bad bacteria, pathogenic bacteria can thrive in that bile. So it disrupts and it changes it. And not only that, when those bad bacteria thrive in that, in that uh, bile environment, they push out the good guys. So they get squeezed out. So you end up with less of the good guys that can actually convert some of that B6 into bioavailable forms. So that may be one of the reasons. Now, we've seen that the case is the same as the case with vitamin D3. Oddly enough, they found, uh, they did a study uh, on vitamin D3 and found those with the highest amounts of vitamin D3 from supplements or directly from sun did not necessarily correlate with high bioactive amounts of, of uh, the 25-OH version, which is the bioactive form of it. And they're like, why is that? And then they found some people have very high bioactive. Why is that? Well, those that had the high bioactive were eating a lot of fiber plant-based diets, vegans and vegetarians, because they're consuming more plants. That plant fiber, once again, fed the bacteria that actually does the change. It converts that D3 into a bioactive form that the body can utilize for health purposes like immune and bone health and even muscle strength. So consuming that extra fiber was the difference maker of how much of that vitamin D3 actually gets used in the system. So once again, consuming a plant-based diet increases your amounts of vitamin K2 in the bloodstream, increases the amounts of bioactive vitamin D3, and it may actually influence the levels of vitamin B6, as we see that you know even the uh, uh, plant-based diet that consumed less but had higher amounts, that may be because of that conversion or bioactivity that's happening in the gut because we consume more fiber that feeds those bacteria that actually help these nutrients be absorbed and be utilized. The initial studies that showed, hey, wait a minute, there's poor absorption, poor utilization was done in omnivores because they weren't eating very many plants. They weren't eating very high fiber diet. Well, if you don't have very much fiber, you're not feeding the bacteria, so they actually go down. That means less conversion, less utilization. That's why they were seeing that, but they just made the assumption about everybody, not realizing that when you change the diet to a plant-based diet, you're consuming a lot more fiber, changing your whole microbiome and becoming more efficient and more effective at allowing these nutrients from the plants we're consuming to be utilized and be found in the bloodstream. So this is amazing that this, this study actually showed higher consumption in, in animal products 
but higher levels in the bloodstream in plants. Now, there could be another reason, and I'm going to talk about this in just a second. I'm going to take this down so you can see me. So that's reason one, changes in the microbiome. Reason two could be pre-converted forms. So when we consume plants, they're usually in precursor forms. Our body takes these nutrients and then alters them slightly, changes them into bioactive forms, either in the gut, digestive system, or inside the bloodstream through enzymes and, and epigenetic changes. So these things can be converted and our body has been trained for, for centuries, for thousands of years, if not tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, our body is adopted to making these changes from plants into bioavailable. Now, when you eat an animal product, that animal has already taken those plant nutrients and converted them into animal forms. So when you take an animal form, it's pre-converted already. You think, well, isn't that a good thing? And what we're finding out over and over and over again is no. Take a look at uh, omega-3s. Omega-3s in fish are pre-converted. They're what they call preformed EPA and DHA. Now, we know now that preformed EPA, the stuff that you find in fish or in animal products, that's already been converted from ALA, which is the only true essential um, omega-3. So instead of taking that, uh, we should be taking the actual ALA form so that we can convert to EPA and DHA ourselves. By taking this pre-converted form in from done, pre-converted by another animal other than us, it says, all right, it's already in that form and you're getting X amount. Instead of letting our body take ALA and convert a little bit to DHA, a little bit to EPA and do all this conversion, and, and feed the body exactly what it needs, when it needs it, where it needs it, that's the proper way. That's why these plant forms are actually better. Let's take a look at heme iron. So most people were saying in the beginning, hey, wait, heme iron, it's the better form of iron because it's pure form. That's what our body uses. That's right. But when you get it pre-made in another animal, instead of the, the uh, plant-based iron, that heme iron going into our bloodstream becomes an oxygen gatherer. It oxidizes. What does iron look like when it oxidizes outside your body? Rust, <laughs> right? That's what it's basically doing inside. This iron is attracting oxygen, which is a free radical and starts tearing it up and makes it very toxic for the body. So we now know that consuming heme iron, the iron form found in animal sources, um, like meat, dairy, eggs, fish, all this is heme iron is actually worse for us because it causes free radical oxygen and damaging to our arteries can lead to a higher risk heart attack, strokes, and, and many of the other cardiovascular diseases, high blood pressure, this sort of things. So we see these preformed DHA, preformed arachidonic acid. So omega-6 is another one. Omega-6 is called LA. It's another, it's the other essential fatty acid that our bodies need, right? When we get it from plants, it's in LA form. All right. When we get it from animals, the animals have already converted the ALA, the LA into something called arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid is very pro-inflammatory. Now, our body takes LA from plants and can convert it to arachidonic acid when it needs it. Like when you work out, when you stress the muscle, you're actually causing arachidonic acid to be released. So your body needs to actually create some of that because then it signals to the cells, hey, we just damaged the cells, come over and fix it, come over and repair, that's muscle growth. So arachidonic acid actually plays a very important role in omega-6 that plays an important role in muscle growth. So that's important, but what you don't want is this preformed arachidonic acid because the body can control it. It can say, okay, I have LA. It does, it's not, it's actually anti-inflammatory in this form. I can change it to arachidonic acid, which is pro-inflammatory. Remember the body doesn't want to get too pro-inflammatory because that's where we get pro-inflammatory diseases. 
diabetes, heart attack, stroke, <laughs> high blood pressure. These are all pro-inflammatory, arthritis. These are all pro-inflammation diseases. So if we have high amounts of inflammation, high amounts of pro-inflammatories like arachidonic acid, we cause disease states on the body. So what you don't want is you want that, that plant sourced LA, the essential fatty acid omega-6 LA, and then let the body convert just as much arachidonic as it, as it needs, when and where it needs it for ideal pro-inflammatory uh, pro states at the right place at the right time in the right amounts. When you consume an animal product, it's already got that LA uh, converted into arachidonic acid. Now you just dump a bunch of pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid into the system, boom, you've got pro-inflammatory stuff cursing through your blood veins. You do not want that, but that happens every time you're eating that preformed arachidonic acid, just like preformed DHA and EPA. You don't want that. You want the precursor forms that are found in plants. That allows the body to regulate those uh, omega-3s and omega-6. Same with heme iron. You want that plant. That study that showed um, this study, and I'll read an exact quote from the study. Higher dietary intake of heme iron is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, whereas no association was found between CVD, that's cardiovascular disease, and non-heme iron, the iron that's found in plants. Why? Because the plants bind it to an antioxidant, so it won't oxidize and, and it won't release that antioxidant until your body needs it to convert it to the iron that it needs for blood and many other processes in the body. So let the body keep it in its, in its unharmful state and then convert it when it needs it, whether that's iron, omega-3, omega-6, or even maybe even in B6. So the last reason why there may be lower amounts of B6, even though there's a higher intake in the animals, they end up with a lower amount than vegetarians. Why do they got so little left over in their bloodstream? Well, maybe because their body is using up B6. So what is B6 used for? Well, one of the things it's used for is detoxifying and metabolizing heme iron. <laughs> so of course, plant-based diets, we're not consuming any heme iron. So we're not using B6 up to try to metabolize and detoxify that heme iron before it actually damages our arteries and, and cardiovascular system. So it's using up this B6 for heme iron metabolism. What's another purpose for B6? Homocysteine metabolism. Where's homocysteine come from? It comes from the metabolism of cysteine and methionine. Methionine and cysteine interchangeable. So when the body needs to detoxify this before it can actually cause damage. And that's where the B6 comes in. Well, guess what animal proteins are higher in? methionine and cysteine, which can convert to homocysteine, which means the body is consuming a lot more and creating a lot more homocysteine, then has to use a lot more B6 to try to get that detoxified and pulled out of the body. So the body is using up this B6. That's why you, even though you have higher consumption in animal proteins and animal products, the, the body is using it up, using it up to try to prevent these diseases that can be caused by heme iron, can be caused by homocysteine, which is also uh, directly correlated with heart attacks and stroke, cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease. <laughs> what else does it do? Well, it, just like I was talking about a minute ago, it helps metabolize inflammation and that arachidonic acid. <laughs> do you see a pattern here? These, all these things that are being caused by the consumption of heme iron, of homocysteine, that's animals, animal products, uh, homocysteine, animal products, inflammation caused by arachidonic acid, animal products. These are not caused. These do not happen. There's no heme iron in plants. There's a lower uh, homocysteine creation because the lower methionine and cysteine that are in plants. There's not as much inflammation because you have anti-inflammatory factors like chlorophyll and, and fiber would creates butyrates, which all these anti-inflammatory factors in the plants, polyphenols, antioxidants. And then of course, 
amino acid metabolism, which of course, those eating a meat centered diet are usually consuming a lot more protein, more protein than they probably need, which means the body actually has to try to get that out of the system and doing so to metabolize it, break it down and, and, and get rid of it. The body has to use a lot of V6. What happens when you get too much of the uh, protein going through the kidneys that can end up uh, some research uh, indicates it can end up actually harming the kidneys. Well, what is the biggest deficiency in kidney disease? B6, right? They've actually shown that B6 in multiple studies have shown to improve uh, prognosis for those with kidney disease. Again, this is from the meat-based diet, the high protein diet that's causing uh, this uh, heavy impact on the kidneys. Therefore, the body has to use up even more B6 to try to recover. So instead of all that, instead of all that damaging stuff that's being done by the meat-based diet, the uh, plant-based diet actually ends up with more circulating B6. So B6 does so many health-promoting things from brain to mood to, to proper metabolism to muscle growth even, playing a role in so many different functions. There's over 150 different functions in, in enzymatic processes that B6 is involved in. So very important to have good, healthy circulating levels so that the body can use it when it needs it. And this study you know, was trying to show oh, you know, plants are worse for B6 and, and vegans could be deficient in B6 because they don't absorb it. And bada bing, bada boom, just the opposite is true once again, and the research proves it. But that these are some of the reasons why we need to stop taking, uh, making assumptions based on those consuming a plant-based diet in studies and include those on a plant-based diet because what we're seeing is two different things two very different things going on physiological. There are physiological changes, there are enzymatic changes, there are microbiome changes that are happening when we shift our diet, when we include more plants. Remember, plants only have the fiber, plants only have the polyphenols, plants only have the chlorophyll. All these phytochemicals that are found only in plants are not being consumed as much or in sufficient quantities when you're on a meat-based diet. There's nothing in meat that we can't get from plants, but there's tons of things in plants that you cannot get, impossible to get from meat and eating a meat-based diet. So there it is once again, it's these assumptions that were based on uh, meat eaters, uh, now we know by including those on a plant-based diet, that the physiology changes, a lot of things changes, and sure enough, those assumptions that you're gonna be deficient in protein, wrong. Deficient in the proteins were incomplete, wrong. Uh, that uh, uh, the better source of omega-3 is EPA and DHA for fish, wrong. <laughs> the best sources of uh, uh, is ALA. It's ALA is the only essential uh, fatty acid in the omega-3 category, and it allows your body to make its decisions when to convert that for every single tissue at any given point, based on your gender, based on your age, based on everything. These are internally regulated inside our body, but they can only be regulated. They can only be changed to different forms if we give them in their initial precursor form. If you get them already changed by another animal into a lower form, you disrupt our regulatory systems in our body for omega-3s, for omega-6s, for micronutrients like iron and, and D3 and vitamin K2. You disrupt that a body's ability to make those decisions to do the right amounts of each one of these nutrients to absorb them through our microbiota by feeding our microbiome exactly what it feeds on, starches, fiber, polyphenols, all found in plants. That's what the good guys in our guts do. And when you change the balance of the microbiota, lots of different nutritional changes happen. We get more out of the food. We become more efficient at absorbing and utilizing. We change more of it into bioactive forms. So this is the really exciting part about not just saying, hey, what's in the plant and what's in the meat? And you're assuming that that's what you get. No, that's, that's so far the, from the truth, because once you put a plant in the diet, a whole cascade of changes 
happens to you physiologically, uh, microbiome wise, enzymatic wise, even epigenetic wise, our genes actually turn on and off epigenetic switches that change what our body produces based on what we eat. And these plants have these phytochemicals that are not found in any animal products, meat, dairy, eggs, fish, none of them. So that's why it's very exciting to see new research finally including uh, some more of this data out there that can give people better information, make them feel more comfortable to make these changes to a plant-based diet and know that you're not only not getting deficient in vitamin K2 or D3, you're actually getting more than, uh, than what was described. Don't listen to that fear base. That is people not wanting to change. I get it. A lot of people don't want to change when you're comfortable with something. You don't want to be wrong about something. I get it. I was a meat eater too once. So yeah, but that was 36 years ago. But now we're seeing the research. It's irrefutable. We understand the physiology so much better. We understand the microbiome so much better. So this is powerful information that you can now share with people that no, you're not getting, that a, a plant-based diet is not deficient in protein. It's actually a better form of protein. It's a better amino acid profile. It's a better source of omega-3s. It's a better source of omega-6. It's a better source of iron and D3. It's a better source. And that's the truth. And that's what we're seeing over and over with this research. When we finally include uh, plant-based uh, consumers and actually look at the data, look at the physiological changes and look at the blood data and tissue data to see what's really going on inside the body. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. My really wish is to uh, continue to, to comb through this research, to find more and more evidence to show you that you can be confident in making the switch to a plant-based diet. You can build the muscle that you want. You can be in the shape that you want. You can feed your brain, take care of your health without these nutritional worries that were based on research and assumptions that were only done on those uh, consuming a standard American diet or omnivore diet. Now we know differently. And as, as these studies keep coming up, which include plant-based eaters, I'll keep sharing with you so you can feel empowered, feel excited, and share with other people so they too know that they can make the change and not be worried about uh, any deficiencies, nutrition or uh, micronutrient deficient or macronutrient deficient, and that you can thrive. I'm 58 years old, 36 years vegan, national bodybuilding and, and physique champion, all natural, drug-free. I don't take any medications whatsoever. I'm in perfect health. That can be a path for you, and that's what I want for you. So you can enjoy life. You can be here for your family and have some fun. I hope this information empowers you to make the best decisions for your health so you can be here for you, for those who love you, for your family and friends, and enjoy the hell out of life, right? It's not about living long. It's about living healthy long, <laughs> that we can enjoy, that we can grow, that we can make a good living and then be able to enjoy it at our end of our lives, not spend it sick or, or dead. That's what I want for you. So that's what I'll keep doing. I'll keep digging the research. I'll keep making the best products that the plant-based uh, research uh, tells me is, is the best. And uh, we'll keep getting them out to you so you can have those healthy choices for yourself. Live long and prosper, my friends. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.